Hello, everybody. Ooh, I am running like six minutes behind. I am so sorry. Thanks for hanging out with me today. <laughs> I even feel a little bit sweaty. I had a client come and uh, they got here at 11 and they just left. We went through all the details of their t-shirt quilt. So I apologize for running a tad bit late. I don't know if you can hear the fan behind me. If that if, if that's causing too much interference in the noise, please let me know. I'll go turn it off. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Today, we are making block number five of this 12-block quilt. It's going to be a sampler, y'all, just in case this is the first time you're watching. Down Home Christmas. And today's block is the log cabin. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Heather. This was one I ordered uh, off of Amazon with my birthday money back in February. Thank you. Oh, yeah, my mom got me the cup a couple years ago. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you ever just have to transition real quick and switch gears from what you're doing? I'm so glad that I took the time to prep this block ahead of time. How's everybody doing? Before we switch the camera over to the cutting mat, I just want to remind you, if you're on Patreon, I cannot wait to hang out with you tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To find the Zoom link, you need to go over to Patreon. And if, if you're on Patreon and you're not sure how to navigate the page, open up the description box of this video and click on the Patreon link. It's going to bring you right over there. In a couple of minutes before 8 o'clock, I'll put the Zoom link on and you can join me. We should have loads of fun. Yay. All right, I'm going to switch the screen and we're going to jump right into it today because that's really the only announcement I have. Here we are. Uh, I did save the salvage edges of some fabrics that I'm using today. Uh, the ones that had salvage edges. <laughs> So uh, when we get to those fabrics, I will let you know who made them. This one is actually uh, was sent to me by Jean, Jeannie. I call her Jeannie or iPad. Uh, so I'm using some of your fabric, Miss Jeannie, today in the log cabin block. We're going to take a look at this block. All of your pieces that you need are right here. The very center piece, I'm using the Barn Red B. You need one of those that's four and a half by four and a half. So I have that pre-cut, right? And then all of these pieces that surround it are listed right here. And I've split them up into two colors. The D is the dark sage green. Actually, I'm using dark and light sage green in mine. I'm going to make it kind of scrappy looking. And the H is the light cream color, and I'm also making that scrappy. If you want to pre-cut your pieces, I've listed all of those sizes here. But let me show you what I've done. Because I was running out of time this morning. I cut a bunch of strips. So we have light cream strips that are two and a half inches wide. I have four different ones. You need four light cream and four of the sage or whatever color you're using. And then I have four sage or green colored. There's Genie's. That one is Marcus Brothers Textiles. Uh, Judy Rothermel Presents Textiles Inspired by the Old Sturbridge Village Collection 2. So that's that fabric there. Then I'm using uh, this green one. Where did it go? This one right there. That is Gratitude and Grace by Kim Deal for Henry Glass Company. Pattern of 9402. HenryGlassFabrics.net. So that's this fabric here. That's pretty spectacular. This one, I think you've seen before. I think we used it already in another block, but it's Wit and Wisdom. That one right there. 
So those are the fabrics I'm working with today. This one I showed you in block number one's video, the first video, because that is going to tie in with my set, my big border. That's my border fabric. So I just have some strips cut two and a half inches. And as we get to each one of these pieces, I'm going to cut them right on the spot. Okay. Hello. So great to see y'all. So great to see you. I'm going to go ahead and get this iron preheating up because we're going to be doing uh, some cutting, some sewing, and some pressing. Cutting, sewing, and pressing today. And I kind of want to keep that close by. Let me fold it in half. There we go, because I'm going to have to reference that with the sizes. We want to make sure we set our quarter inch seam allowance. And uh, for me, I have to remember to use the scant quarter inch because of my fabrics and my thread. So let me get that changed over real quick. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. All right, I'm working with a scant quarter inch. And we're ready to start. The focus is fuzzy. Am I fuzzy to anybody else? Because it might be, Linda, that you might have to close down the video and come back. Am I out of focus for anybody else? Hazel said, no, you're clear to me. Thank you. Nope. All right. Miss Linda, it looks like uh, maybe if you close down the video, just exit out of the video and try coming back. Sometimes that'll fix the out of focus video. Sometimes it is on my side, but sometimes not. Vicki, thank you so much for moderating today. We're going to go ahead and get started, y'all. So we have the very center of our block. This is four and a half by four and a half. And we are building this block from the center out. We're going to be working our way right around this block. And I even put the order in which you sew together these pieces, okay? And it's right there in the small little diagram. It might be too small to see it in the video, but it is there. That's the order in which we're adding all the pieces. So we have our center piece. That's number one. We're going to add piece number two. That's a light cream color. And we're going with the smallest one. And it just works in order. Okay, from smallest to largest. So two and a half by six and a half. That's piece number two. Let me figure out which order I want to use these in. I want it to kind of look scrappy. There we go. We'll do that order with those. H. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Two and a half by four and a half. I was looking over here. We're working with H. Lisa, two and a half by four and a half. My strips are already cut at two and a half inches. And we're going to cut it to four and a half inches long. If you have a jelly roll that you've been wanting to use up, this would work perfect with a jelly roll. One, two, three, four and a half. All right, so that fabric is done. And it goes to the right of our four and a half inch piece, just like that. We're going to flip it over. And we're sewing that seam first. There we go. All right. Uh, I kind of want to see. Let me see if I have this set up okay. There we go. I won't have to flip back and forth so much. 
Yay. <laughs> All right, I'm bringing this right on over and we're gonna be sewing our first seam. Just gonna get these fabrics lined up really nice and neat. Just like that. So there's our first seam of this block. There are so many variations of a um, log cabin block. So if you like the look of this, I encourage you to do a search, uh, maybe on Pinterest, because all kinds of stuff comes up on Pinterest. So many different variations. This is actually a really easy log cabin block. I'm going to press my seams uh, open today. Let's do that. And I'm just going to press that seam. Tommy B said, great camera action. Thank you. <laughs> The back and forth works if you're only going a couple times, right? Back and forth, but we're going to be doing lots of back and forth today. Hopefully, though, this camera is not too small for you to actually see what we're doing. All right, so we have got one and two done. Number three goes right above, and that is also the light cream color. So we're going to pull that one, and we're going to cut it. This one is two and a half by six and a half. I actually have an easier time using this. Let's see. So what are y'all doing this weekend? Anything exciting? One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. All right, so there's that one. And that one goes right on the top, just like that. And we're flipping it over and sewing that one. Sewing, sewing, watching me. Sewing your blocks, sewing your blocks. Awesome. Last night I was able to join Vicky Zoom over on the creative crew. And I got a lot of sashing done. Y'all see that up on the wall behind me? I was able to get a lot of that done last night. So there's our second seam of this block. And we're going to press that one. Now it might be easier not to press this open. We're going to see. Nope, I'm having to fiddle too much. I'm going to press it to the side because of this seam here. We're going to just press it to the side. My phone's over there. <laughs> Vicky got two blocks done last night. Ooh, yeah. Diana's sewing all day. Alexis is in Maryland, Virginia border. Ooh, you're making some progress, Alexis. All right, so we did one, two, and three. Piece number four is this piece here. It's going to go to the left of what we've already done. And that is a sage green color. Or whatever color you're using. 
So this piece is two and a half by six and a half. I do think for just making one block, I would maybe cut my pieces one at a time like this. But if you were making a whole log cabin, a whole log cabin quilt, I would pre-cut all these pieces and do some chain piecing. And I usually cut much easier standing up. But I'm sitting down today. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Let's just do that right there. So this piece is going to go to the left like that. I'm going to flip it and sew it. Tommy, usually I do, well, usually I let my seam kind of dictate the way it wants to go. But in this case, it will be away from the center as we work our way out. Or I press it to the dark side if I can. There we go. That looks good. And we're going to just set that real quick and press it over. Ooh, I like the scrappy. I can already tell you. I'm going to be really glad that I went scrappy on this one. That's because those fabrics really go if you're watching on a cell phone, this part of the video looks really small, doesn't it? So that was piece number four. Piece number five goes right below it, and that's also a sage green. Let's audition the sage green. Ooh, yes. We'll go darker on the outside, too. So this is two and a half by eight and a half right there. Two and a half. That's easier to cut. Nope. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of flighty today, y'all. I'm so out of focus. So out of focus. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a half. And this piece is going right underneath. See how that's shaping up? And we're just working our way right around as we go. Matching up those edges. Actually, my scant quarter inch is a little bit too less for this block. I wonder why. That's interesting. Gonna set that seam. Okay. 
And then we're going to press it. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for that fabric. That is gorgeous. I knew when I saw it that it would go in this quilt. So there's our piece. That was one, two, three, four, five. That was piece number five. Piece number six is going to go to the right, and that's the light cream. And this is also two and a half, two and a half by eight and a half. I'm so used to looking right there. <laughs> We're going to use this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the half. And she is going to go to the right of that, just like that. And we're going to match those edges up. I had someone ask in the video from yesterday after the video was over, what is the Creative Crew Group? Uh, the Creative Crew Group is a Facebook group that I host. It's not all about me. It's all about everyone who is there. <laughs> I post hardly seldom in the creative crew, but I host a place where all of us can come together in a very safe place. So if you're a brand new quilter, a brand new crochet, knitting, painting, any of the genres of crafting, you're in a safe place to post pictures and ask questions. We have an awesome moderator, Miss Maureen. So we try to keep it free from all the drama and all the other kind of stuff like that. She does a really good job of helping moderate that group. And uh, if you're on Facebook, there is a link to join us in the description box. And there will be two security questions, and you have to answer both, or we can't let you in. <laughs> we just like to make sure that there's no spam accounts and stuff like that. It is not a uh, selling group or a buying group, you know. So, uh, it's free from that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, I really, I'm really liking the scrappy. That was piece number six. Piece number seven goes right on top. And that is our last light cream colored piece. And that is going to be two and a half by ten and a half. Two and a half, ten and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. I have to count out loud. There we go.
and she's going to go right over top like that. Oh, that's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> that's going to be so pretty. I'm bringing this over. See lots of back and forth with this block. Make sure it's lined up from edge to edge, just like that. Pressing again. Yep, my blade is closed. I try to be about the blade safety. It's closed. Sometimes I do forget, though. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes I forget to close it. Diva said, answer the questions. Okay, what questions have I missed? Oh. For the, yes, for the creative crew. <laughs> Maureen, I thought you were yelling at me to answer the questions. Y'all, this is going to be so dang pretty. Look at that. Yes. All right, that was the last cream color, and that was piece number seven right at the top piece number eight is going to be right here come right along the left side and that's a sage color we're going to go with that one and this one is also also ten and a half inches long two and a half by ten and a half Thank you so much, Miss Maureen and Vicki, for uh, moderating the chat today so I can focus on cutting all my pieces the right size. Two and a half by ten and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. And she's going to come on the left, just like that. And we're sewing that seam. And we just have one more piece to add to this block today. One more piece. So even though I'm cutting as we're making this block, I feel like it's going by pretty quick. And our last piece is going to go right on the bottom, y'all. And this should be 
12 and a half inches long, two and a half by 12 and a half. Can you just sew the long strips on and then trim? Absolutely, Phyllis. You could do that. If you don't want to pre-cut like I'm doing, you could just sew it on. I would press that seam and then trim it. But yes, you can absolutely do that. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and show you. You want to see? Just in case someone's wondering exactly what we're talking about, let me just show you. So instead of pre-cutting each piece as I did it, you could just have your strips any size, just longer than what you need it to be, right? You could line up that seam and sew it. Absolutely. See how it's bigger? It's sticking over the edge of that block right there. And just keep it lined up. These longer seams, I have a harder time staying straight. There's the edge of my block, and you'll see that strip just extends beyond it. Just to make sure, so beyond where you see that you can feel it too, the edge of that block. So beyond the edge of that block. And then, since that was our last seam, I'm going to make this bigger. And now I can look this way. <laughs> Let's bring this pressing board over. There we go. I'm just going to set that seam very quickly. And then we can flip it right on over. I think her machine is a Juki. Yes, absolutely it is. It's a Juki HZL F600. So we'll press it and now we can trim off the extra ends. So if that works uh, faster and easier for you, absolutely do it that way. There's always uh, more than one way to do anything, right? So now we're just going to line this up nice and straight. And trim the ends right off. I'm just trying to scoot this over so I can <laughs> trim this straight. There we go. And there we are, y'all. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. This might be my favorite block so far that we've made. Oh, I think I would love a whole quilt made just like that. All right. Thank goodness we have moderators today. Thank you so much for taking care of that, Miss Diva. That's why I don't like going live without a moderator. 
Thank you so much. Yes, I do have a filter on my microphone uh, that cuts out the noise of my machine. This machine makes the same normal sewing machine noise. You just don't hear it in the video. Uh, so it, it doesn't overpower if I'm talking while sewing. Yes, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I love it. It's, that's my favorite block out of all of them. I'm just looking at the wall. They're pretty too, but this is my favorite so far. Dixie Doodles, be glad you didn't see the comment. Somebody's sitting there on a Saturday has nothing else better to do than to be nasty. If you're still sticking around, Mr. Nasty Comment Person, dude, go do something with your life, really. Stop trying to mess with us quilter people and anybody else here on the YouTube. Really. Yes, thank you so much to my moderators. Yeah, the colors are really warm, right? I wanted it to look very homespun. And it does. And the sad part is I only have... Uh, fat quarters of most of this so I cannot repeat this multiple times because I would make this in a as a quilt repeated several times and a heartbeat that's gorgeous <laughs> Heather said never offend a woman with a blade in her hand yes So there's our log cabin. Many of y'all have probably made this block. We made this block during the uh, Happy at Home quilt series. Do y'all remember that last year? We also made this block, and this is the block we're making tomorrow, the Friendship Star. I have all of the pieces you need for that. Right here in block number six. I'm going to be using uh, some blue, some light cream, and uh, the barn red again in this center. I might change it out from that fabric, but those are the colors I'm using tomorrow. We will be making half square triangles again tomorrow, but tomorrow we're going to make four at a time. So a little bit different than when we made the churn dash. But yes, that's the block tomorrow. Oh, Terry, these are the colors you buy repeatedly. Yeah, uh, in the last several months, I've been really leaning towards the more homespun kind of looks. I think my taste in fabrics or colors has kind of shifted and changed in the last several months. And I'm just really leaning towards this homespun kind of country, a little bit primitive look to my fabrics and to my quilts. So this is like really making me happy right now. <laughs> yes. So tomorrow is the friendship star. I know some of you have already done the friendship star block. I saw some last night in the Zoom. I've seen some posted pictures on the creative group. Y'all are doing so good. And, uh, and here's the thing. I don't know that I've seen anybody use the exact kind of tones of fabric that I'm using. I've seen brights and I've seen just random scrappy. And all of them are coming together so pretty. Like, if you haven't checked out Creative Crew in a while, scroll through the news feed over there. It looks like Christmas over there. <laughs> Christmas in July. 
So many different colors being used, though, and I love all of them. Mary is off to sew today. All right, I hope you have a fantastic day. Y'all, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video today. Because we just blew, I thought maybe I would extend it out by cutting each piece as we went, but it still went pretty quick. It still went pretty quick. And I've been kind of chatty too, so. Ah, Cheryl, yes, you're so welcome. You know what? Uh, sampler quilts aren't for everybody. I know, I know some really good friends. Sampler quilts is not their thing. Even more traditional kind of patchwork quilts is not their thing. And, uh, and we all have different uh, tastes and different likes and dislikes, right? But I agree. The sampler quilts do give you an opportunity to try out blocks you've never tried before to see if you might like them. And uh, so, yeah, I totally agree. Sylvia's off to do some sewing. Yes, Vicki, thank you so much for the reminder. Uh, each night, Vicki has been hosting a Zoom so that if you're sewing your blocks uh, in the evening and you want to hang out with somebody, you can. Tonight, she's not available because Miss Vicki is on the Patreon, so she's going to join me over there. Uh, but I believe tomorrow she might host a Zoom on Creative Crew. We'll see. Yeah, Patricia said, don't worry, Lisa, you can take more time with the root. Yeah, the applique blocks take a good hot minute, don't it? The next one will be day after, let's see, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're doing applique again. That might take a hot minute. Tomorrow's block is going to go by pretty quick, too. Vicki said, yes, Sunday night Zoom with Vicki. Tommy, I see your comments. So if you're not seeing any comments, uh, close the live chat, maybe close the video and try coming back and rejoining. I do see your comments coming through, though. You just might be frozen on your end. Oh, yeah, if y'all could give me a thumbs up before you leave, that would be fantastic. If you share the video, that would be even greater. Thank you so much. Here's my log cabin block. It's going to go right there. And uh, you know what? I will see I will see you tomorrow, tomorrow Sunday. Hope you have a fantastic Saturday today. Uh, I feel giddy because it's my cheat day, so we're going to have a delicious Alfredo shrimp at dinner <laughs> that I'm making. And I cannot wait to chow down on dinner. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Post pictures of your log cabin blocks. I want to see them. Bye.